everyone welcome back to the wicked modern websites youtube channel today it is a distinct pleasure and honor to be able to interview one of the business leaders of the restaurant beverage entertainment operations industry george Ernstein, the director of operations for apex entertainment here in marlboro george thanks for being on the show welcome andy it is a pleasure to speak with you today thank you for having me it's really great to have you here. It's really an honor. It's like a coup for me. And you're such you're you're such an interesting character. You're a person that I, I have wanted to interview for quite a while um, for a variety of reasons. You came up in the restaurant industry as a chef, working for Aramark, working for the United States at the Olympic as at the Olympics in 2004 as the head chef is incredible life experience that I feel like I could talk about and, and learn. I want to hear more about. We and, can do a whole show on what we did in Greece. It was, it was pretty phenomenal. Oh my goodness. And Greece is so beautiful. Unbelievable. So beautiful. Have you been back since the Olympics? I, I haven't been back, but it is one of the, uh, one of the bucket list trips uh, with my wife. The, we're trying to dwindle down the bucket list. We, we were a Disney family for many years. As our kids start to get a little older, we start to see that they might need a little more culture besides the uh, countries of Epcot. So uh, Greece is definitely on the list of uh, places that we want to go either with or without them, depending on, uh, you know, uh, what, what time of the year it is. But it's, uh, you know, that's, it's pretty high. It's probably one or two right now on our list. That's amazing. Uh my brothers got married. They went, had their honeymoon in Greece. So I'm all about Greece. So I want to hear more oh, about that for so sure. So beautiful. Um, a little bit more background on you. Then you were the head chef for the Stone Forge, some tremendous high-end restaurant in Easton and the Yard House in Dedham before moving over to become the director of operations at Apex Entertainment, the big, the bad, the wonderful Apex Entertainment here. Um so I, you know, since you've got such an exciting event to talk about, I just want to ask you about the beer summit because now you've been talking to me offline about all the breweries, all the wonderful food and drinks that are going to be here at the beer summit. So can you tell us more about your event? Yeah. So uh, the beer summit was when I interviewed back in 2018 with Apex. Uh, I I kind of did my reconnaissance. I came in on a busy uh, February vacation with my family. Uh, my brother, his son, my, my two young kids, and we walked around and I, and I saw instant potential and I saw, you know, uh, serving group and like uh, big platters of food on the lanes to make everything super shareable buckets of beer, which, you know, is like a blast from the past from the eighties where you just, you're not waiting on the server to come back. The server is already giving you your second drink. It's chilled. It's right in front of you. So you're allowed to enjoy that company more with your guests. And you're not, you know, I don't think that anytime a server comes over, it's an interruption. But how many times have you been out to eat and you're mid-sentence or mid-bite and then they come back, hey, how was everything? So your second drink is already there, you know, and that's how we viewed this. And then the, the final kind of like piece that I, uh, I sold the owner of our company my CEO, my, what is now my COO. And I was like, we should have a beer festival. You have 4,000 square feet of meeting space. We can utilize the whole top floor. Cause we were at that time, we were just a two floor uh, establishment inside the apex entertainment center. And it was just like a no brainer. We had 30 breweries our first year. We got up to 50 our second year and we started to add some more fun pieces to it. Uh, Tito's and, and Red Bull at the time were there with us. Uh, this year, it's going to be even bigger. We're closing in on like 60, 65. Uh, I'm gunning for 70 vendors total. I Whoa. have ghost I have ghost tequila with us as a throw in. I have again, Tito's will be back. Monster energy drinks will be here. We have a lot of cool other uh, liquors that will be here with this Campo Bravo tequila, which is, you know, ghost and Campo Bravo are my two favorite brands of tequila. So I can't wait for them to do their sampling. And then you have Wormtown. Jack's Abbey, Down East, uh, heavyweights in the Marlboro area, like Flying Dreams, Lost Shoe, Tackle Box. Like we're, we're going as big box and fun and as hyper local as we can get. And it's just a great night of just fun and food. The menu's crazy. We have uh, fresh baked pretzels because beer and pretzels go together from Swiss bakers. Uh, and they're coming in and baking pretzels exclusively for us that day. 
Uh, I'm working on new Mexican street corn dip that we'll, we'll launch that day. And then um, it's just pizza and fun food and, and snack types items. And uh, we're working on hot dog sliders uh, uh, that are just fire. They're so good. Um, and so I'll just have an awesome menu set up of just fun, uh, fun food and, and entertainment. Uh, and we're working with a uh, clear path for veterans. So we'll have an, uh, a pretty impressive, if I, if I might say, uh, kind of raffle, uh, item we, there was, uh, in 2019, we had over a hundred items on the raffle table and we raised $11,000 for clear path for veterans. And that's the charity that will be donating all the proceeds to the, um, from the raffle too. Uh, so it's just a really awesome opportunity to come hang out with friends and family. Again, the world starts to open up two years after everything shut down. And this is like our, this is our welcome back party, so to speak. And we just want everybody to come out, everybody to check us out, have some beer. Uh, and if you don't like beer, there's liquor. If you don't like liquor, I'll have wine. If you don't like alcohol, I'll have food and I'll have food and NA beverages, but we will have fun for everybody. And you get to be in an apex. So when you're done, go play laser tag. Uh, before the festival uh, starts, go ride the go-karts because you can't ride them afterwards. But bowl, bowl, uh, bowl a couple frames, uh, go play mini golf. We just have so much to offer you once you're in the building that it's just, it's a night that you don't want to miss. So we'll circle back to the event in just a moment, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about Apex Entertainment itself for those of us who may not already be familiar? Sure. So Apex Entertainment is... Um, a family entertainment center. Uh, we have four locations currently right now. We're in Melbourne, Massachusetts, Albany and Syracuse, New York and Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, our first location started uh, December, 2017, literally December 26th, day after Christmas, we opened the doors. We have 30 luxury bowling lanes. I have a bi-level go-kart track. Carts get up to like 50 miles an hour. I have a two-story laser tag facility, bumper cars, a hundred arcade games, a ropes course that elevates 20 feet in the air. <clears throat> uh, I have uh, indoor black light mini golf. I have a um, kind of like a soft play area. So I have uh, bouncy castles and a giant like super slide and a, a big like indoor jungle gym for a younger crowd. Uh, we have literally something for everybody. It's like we built the biggest playground that you can imagine and everybody's invited. Well, I was privilege and honored to have a personal tour from you your uh myself and i gotta say everything you it was one of the most impressive uh entertainment facilities i've ever been in and as a guy a family man who has little kids i spend a lot of time in these types of places and, yeah uh, i was just impressed with the variety and quality and cleanliness of the establishment and uh it's a great place for people to check out I'm i just sure think it's it's so we're built uh we're on route 20 in Marlboro, uh right up 495 and uh for anybody that knew the area before us we were it's we're on 400 acres that was essentially like an apple orchard so if you were in Marlboro five years ago or if you moved away and then came back this is all new this development this kind of renaissance in the in the city itself uh and this upbuild is is awesome and uh you know we we have the privilege to have uh a relationship and, and kind of like a quasi ownership with uh, some other amazing brands. So if you come to the Apex Entertainment Center in Marlboro, you can dine at um, uh, the 110 Grill and Aviva Trattoria, which we are affiliated with uh, um, as, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of owned under one umbrella by uh, all, all these different companies. And those are two just killer restaurants and they have multiple locations around the state and, and in a couple other states, but it's just like so nice to uh, be a part of something so special with all these different brands and, and the ability to, you know, when you come to Apex, I want it, I want you to come and enjoy and never leave. But if you don't want our food, which I don't know why you wouldn't want a two pound pretzel or a two foot long hot dog or a 10 pound burger. Uh, but right. if you're going to eat and, and you want Italian, we have a Viva Trattoria. If you want some killer, you know, just American flair food, and you go to 110 Grill, you're keeping it within the family. So it's it's thumbs up for me. Well, and absolutely. And it feels like the whole Marlboro area has really developed and benefited from, from the uh, establishment of Apex and your tremendous operation there. Uh, you know, I live about an hour south and I hadn't really had the opportunity to be up there lately. And I was just blown away. I didn't realize yeah, nice. the amount of 
commerce and business development that's been going on there and, and what what you've done there it's it's tremendous really yeah they, they uh this this project itself has very much kind of revitalized an already great city and just made it now a destination it's tremendous and really and i recommend everyone who's watching this video get up there check it out check out the food at all these places especially apex especially things that have been handpicked by the chef who's the head of the united states olympics uh for aramark let's let's circle back it's such an interesting thing tell me what it was like working in Greece at the Olympics in 2004, you know, representing your country. We're all big sports fans, but the opportunity to really represent your country in, in that sort of an so, arena must have been incredible. So I fell in love with it uh, because in high school, we got to go on our, uh, was the April vacation field trip. So I went to Greece and I just fell in love with the country. And, you know, it was one of my goals to get back there, you know, eventually. And uh, my roommate at the time, he, uh, we were in grad school at Johnson and Wales. And he said, um, I'm going to do this internship in, in England at this uh, at, uh, St. Andrews. And uh, so he did it at the golf course. Um, and he worked in the, the essentially the catering department there. And I'm like, all right, well, what, what else, you know, what else did you hear about today? And he's like, you can do an internship with Aramark at the Olympics. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. That's, that's, I'm going. And I couldn't fill out the application fast enough. And, you know, next thing you know, you're on a flight. And it is awesome. We did 70,000 meals a day. There's two dining halls. Uh, there was, I, I appreciate you calling me the United States chef, but I was literally one of 50 essential interns that did this uh, program. And during the program itself, they hired, they hired me on as a full-blown uh, chef. So, uh, you know, when I left Greece, I came home to a job at uh, Simmons College, but the the program itself was just a super intense, you're cooking around the clock. Uh, I've never worked in literally refrigerated kitchens before, and because it's so hot, I mean, it was 100 degrees almost every single day there, you had to work essentially in coolers, and then you have like your hot areas, and you're working with hundreds and hundreds of people to produce these thousands and thousands of meals a day, and it was just a culinary experience to see people from again all over the world to meet different athletes to meet um representatives from these countries and to see how gracious and grateful uh they were just that the meals were prepping and uh you know uh the ioc and, and the aramark did a really good job of making sure that everybody could eat what they were supposed to eat and that's what our job was and it wasn't just you know kind of a uh, catering style you know, food in a tray, like we really took uh, a lot of effort to make, you know, ethnic food and, and really hit all those metrics for all these athletes. Wow. <laughs> wow. That must be just such a, such a, like a, a formational and foundational experience for you launching a career in the restaurant, hospitality and entertainment industry. So, uh, so aside from the fact that, you know, I, I, I can only assume that you draw so much of your experience from your career past that. What did you find so surprising about that? What surprised you about being involved with the Olympic experience? Cause it's not just the, it's not just. I the think that you always wonder who does it and how they get these kind of jobs. Like how, how could I cook for these athletes or how could I work for the IOC? And then you get the opportunity to do it. And I think that is that there, there are jobs out there that you think you want or that interest you. You just have to kind of turn the page and dig in just a little deeper to see if you're actually qualified, you qualify for the position or you could actually handle it. You know, we worked uh, very, very hard, very long hours, eight, 15, 18 hours a day, um, you know, to make sure this all worked. And then on my day off, you end up at gold medal be men's beach volleyball and you're sitting in the sun watching, you know, Brazil win a gold medal in beach volleyball and, you know, the passion in the crowd and all these people have flown in from all over the world to see this kind of stuff. And it's like, wow, I mean, this is awesome. Real first class. So, so like you were saying, I think people are just so limited by their fear, but you were a young guy back then, right? You weren't yes. afraid to go out and apply for the internship, go with the United States, Greece and show leadership and assertiveness to the point that you got the job. And I think that 
there's so much lesson in that. And so many of us are limited by our fear every single day. I think that I didn't know anything else. So it, I was, I think I was nervous getting on the plane because I was going to miss my family. And then coming home essentially like four months later and like driving around East and after I get picked up at the airport and it's like, oh, nothing's changed. So it was, that made me so much calmer about the whole trip and like the whole process. Cause once you land, you're there, you're not coming home and you're working and they put you to work the very next day. We, we, you know, help set up these kitchens and then it was go time. So you had very little downtime to kind of be homesick and it was just very much go, go, go. But again, on your days off, I mean, you know, I, I live in East and you live in, in Raynham, right? Correct. On your day off, you know where you're going to be. You're going to wake up. You're going to go get a coffee. You're going to maybe get, get, get a sandwich. You're going to go out to dinner with your family. On my day off, it was like, hey, let's go to an island. You know, it, it's like a world that you, you, do not, you do not understand. It's not like going from Easton to Cape Cod. You, you, you know what I mean? It, and, and that's what I think the craziest part and the most fun was, is that it was like, you know what? I have two days off. We're going to go island hopping. And we're not going to come home until the minute we have to go back to work. And we're going to, you know, crush work again. And so you were in your early 20s then, right? You were 20, uh, 22, 23, something like that. Not afraid. And so many of us wait, wait so much for our time. I feel like I've hit my stride in my 40s, but I feel like if I had been less limited by my fear in my 20s and 30s that I could have even gone further. And I just love to hear stories of people who are not afraid to overcome their fear because that's really what we're all here to do. Right. Yeah, very much so. Great, great insight. So from there, you went on to work and be the head chef. Your tasting food has always been amazing. And there's so many stories we could tell. But you are the head chef at Stoneforge in Easton and at the uh, at the Yard House in Dedham, of course, for 10 years. So so we work with a lot of clients in the restaurant industry, right? Obviously, we're a website development company and marketing agent. And so many of the folks who reach out to us are in those industries. Uh, some of our recent clients here, like the seafood and cones that's just open and is a big hit and the barrels and boards. But what would you say to those folks who are running their own restaurant? Food trucks are big now or people who want to launch into the restaurant industry, what sort of tips would you give them? How, what do they need to know before entering these industries? And what can you, what sort of advice can you give them to help them succeed? So uh, first of all, big shout out to Barrels and Boards. I think it's one of the best restaurants on the South Shore. Uh, I ate there two weeks ago with my family. and Everything was great. Um, I, I think that, you know, at, at the end of the day, it, you have to kind of choose your path. And I think a lot of kids coming out of culinary school have this uh, misnomer, this preconceived notion that I'm a chef now. It's literally just begun for you. You know, like 1% or less come out of culinary school and become executive chefs and like really, really high end, you know, foodies. Everybody else, you still are going to be a, a line cook or you're still going to have to like, follow your path and bounce around and, and do all these things. I am very much a creature of habit. I spent uh, three years at Aramark. I took the job at the Stone Forge because my little brother literally was the first cook they had hired. And he's like, you got to come and meet the chef. I fell in love with the chef. I thought, I thought the guy that I was working for at the time when I took the job was just a rock star chef. So I wanted to work for him. I discovered Yard House because I just, you know, I mean, 2006, I, I couldn't even tell you what the internet was. So by 2007 and eight, when I'm playing around and looking for different recipes and different specials to kind of mirror or mimic, I typed in food and beer. And all of a sudden the Yard House shows up. Well, I had taken uh, my little brother to Vegas for his 21st birthday. And the first thing we did was we got off the plane, we went to the hotel and we went to eat at the Yard House. And I'm blown away. There's rock and roll music. There's beers from all over the all over the country. The food's killer, and I'm sitting there, exhausted, drinking a Moose Drool Brown Ale, uh, <laughs> which is still like still like one of my top three favorite beers of all time. And I said to my little brother, I was like, I'm gonna work here one day. I don't know how, but I'm gonna work here one day. And two years later, Yardhouse pops up in, in Legacy Place in Dedham, and I had applied, and it was the right time to make the move. And like, I've never looked back. I think that like, 
you know, a lot of people online right now, when you watch these clips on Instagram and, and YouTube, and it, everybody will tell you to bounce around, find your niche, your niche with, with different companies and jobs and restaurants, meet as many people as you can. Legit, that, that is real. I chose a different path. And I don't think it was a wrong path because it worked for me. But the more people you can meet and the more connections you can make in the, in the alcohol or the beer industry, in the entertainment industry, in the food industry, the greater your opportunities will become. So don't be shy. Say hello. Don't be silent. Speak up when you're in a room with people. Be engaging. Uh, step out of your comfort zone a little bit and a lot of it. And it, like literally you will reap the benefits of it because you need one person, just one person to remember who you were the last time they met you to call you by your first name when you walk by them again and shake your hand or fist bump you or whatever. And that introduces you to five more people. Hey, this is the guy I was talking to about the last time, or this is the girl that, that I was so interesting. That's it. That's your introduction to a whole new world. And I think that like so many people are, and, and I made this mistake. I was a wallflower. I just stayed back and I put my head down and all I wanted to do was be a chef. And then the minute I stopped being a chef is when kind of like the world opened up for me. If I had done this 10 years prior, I don't know where I would be right now. I'm very happy with where I am right now, currently though, you know, just for the record. And you should be, and you should be. And that is great advice. And it's something I'm always trying to work with all my clients on. And that is make an impression. Yeah, big time. It really does. Like, I cannot stress enough that the people you meet in your 20s literally are going to support you, whether you know it or not, in your 30s and 40s. And all you have to do is leave a nice impression, a lasting impression. And it, it, it literally carries for 20 years. We, uh, we're we big in the business networking world and in our group, the BNI, we always say, you know, it's all about no liking and trusting people, right? You know, yep, you're work with people you don't like and trust. And if, if you don't make an impression and you don't put yourself out there, you don't offer your ideas, then nobody's going to know you. That's the first one. And they got to yeah. know you before they can like you and trust you, right? Yeah. And really we're all, no matter who we're working for, we're all our own little individual corporation. It's our own responsibility to drive our career forward by introducing ourselves. If we want to get ahead in the restaurant industry, we've got to network. Your network is your network. They have to. Cliche, but all the connections that you've created are, are what have because empowered you to be where you are. You, you got to know that everybody is doing each other's food right now. They just are. I mean, one day I'm going to see a two foot long hot dog somebody somewhere else and I'm going to be honored. I'm not going to be insulted. One day, you know, I have a 10 pound burger because somebody had an eight pound burger and somebody had a three pound burger, you know, and, and that's what you have to look at every single time is somebody is always going to, you know, uh, copying is like the best form of flattery, I guess. Yeah. And, and like with chefs, like everybody wants to try to intimidate or, or recreate, not intimidate, recreate somebody's food. And, um, you know, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's just so flattering to see something you did and have somebody else nail it. And you've got to get over that initial feeling of jealousy or resentment or they're copying oh, no. me. They're doing what I do. And we know that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. But at the same time, when, when somebody else is doing something that you're doing, it feels like your toes are being stepped on. But when you can understand it and put it into perspective, and embrace that you've had influence in the marketplace yep, big time. and not be afraid or intimidated by it. Like I always try to net when I realized that I don't need to stay away from my competition. I need to network with my competition, other marketers and other website developers that has allowed me to grow so much more. And if you're a chef, you can't be you know, intimidated by other chefs or other restaurants, you got to create that. You got to create an impression. You got to bring it together. You need to embrace that brotherhood, sisterhood, that that camaraderie, and collaborate and and help each other expand and grow. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for all those answers. Well, I had another topic. The topics are coming fast and furious. And another reason that I wanted to talk to you for so long and i thought i think this conversation would be so interesting is because i've seen watch your career develop but i've also watched you develop personally physically and mentally and part of that in the last 
uh, year, year and a half is the tremendous amount of weight that you have dropped, which is just congratulations yeah. to you. I know you put in work. Thank you. What it is, is literally uh, August, August 22nd will be one year. And, uh, you know, I, I look back at photos even a year ago today. Maybe we can put the photo up on the screen here. Yeah, sure. I'll, I can take it. That'd be great. I, I, was, I, I was lost. I was not happy. Uh, my relationship with my kids was rough and because I couldn't keep up with them. Uh, my, my coaching ability was like staggered because I could, I could barely breathe some days. I was so heavy, the hot sun, like it was just killing me. And, uh, my, my marriage was like super stressed, uh, because, you know, we, my wife and I both were just like, we were not happy with ourselves. And literally we were just at each other's throats because we were so unhappy with ourselves. So you have a short fuse, you have a short temper, you like, you're not doing the things you're supposed to be doing. Uh, and, you know, we uh, met a person who did marketing uh, for Awaken 180 Weight Loss. And my, you know, I said hello. And I wasn't introducing myself to too many people last year. I was very, I stayed in my office. I did my job. I was in the kitchen. I was, I very much hid myself because I was not happy with my appearance. But I still had a job to do. So, hey, how are you? My name is George. I would love to give you guys a menu here and be a sample on your program. That was within the first two, three minutes of meeting uh, Dan White. Um, and uh, he's like, well, let me let me run it up the, the ladder and see if they're interested. And a meeting turned into two meetings, turned into three meetings, turned into, hey, we're doing this. And we gave uh, Awaken 180 Weight Loss uh, uh, like a special uh, uh, Awaken 180 uh, approved menu at Apex exclusively. I think it's just us and Davios that have their menus uh, for in their, in our establishments for Awaken 180 because Steve DiFilippo was also on the program and uh, myself and my uh, and our COO Marcus Kamblowski we, we went on this program together and I think that a if I was on it by myself I wouldn't have been so successful I loved having my my partner in it with me um, and I was able to lose 120 pounds in about nine months Marcus lost uh, 70 pounds he was a little taller and a little smaller so he could he didn't need to lose as much, uh, but yeah, combined over 200 pounds uh, lost. And it was just a life changing. Every pound was life changing. I, wow. the, the ability to live life and to be just high energy all the time. Um, you know, I, I talked to my wife on the, on the ride to work every day. And I said to her, I was like, Hey, I hope you're having a great day today. I just crushed three, you know, phone call meetings literally on the drive up to Marlboro because it's, it's like a 45 minute ride to work every day. And I feel so accomplished. I haven't even walked a, a step in the door yet. So, you know, just my whole, my overall demeanor uh, with life, with my kids, with my marriage, with my family, with work, I am so dialed in and hyper-focused now on building our brand and being successful and, you know, creating this culture that like everything has improved. <clears throat> Wow. Uh, and, and it's really, that's what a, a collaboration that is between Apex and Waken 180 to have that menu there available and to have you and your partner, Marcus, as the social proof, as the yeah, evidence it does work. how this works right in front of everyone to see. And, uh, and then, you know, that's part of the reason that I've reconnected with you is because you put on this incredible media blitz. I was driving down the street yeah. one day and I heard your voice on the sports hub talking about Awaken 180 and it went through me like a bolt of lightning because that was a person that I know and I never forget a, a, a name or a voice or a friend, but I never envision now don't take this the wrong way but i just never envisioned you as the type of guy to be the media the forward facing media front of a corporation or even of himself to be perfectly frank and now i see you your confidence is incredible your media savvy is off the charts and it's really just inspiring stuff george like i said i just wanted to be in a kitchen i just wanted to be you know, I wanted to help motivate my team, but I wanted to be left alone. I, I, I didn't need to meet people because I was comfortable in what I was doing, although I wasn't comfortable really in much else. And then as soon as you start, 
you know, you, you leave the kitchen, you go up front, you start uh, interacting with guests and, 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 you know, people as they come in and families, like you either, you either have that in you because you can't teach that. You either are ready to, you know, interact and to be a brand representative or you're not. And I was, and I was given great advice by uh, some people that I hold very near and dear to my heart uh, at Yard House. And they were like, you need to leave the kitchen. You need to go out front. You need to start this process and look where it will take you. And unfortunately, and fortunately in the same breath, it wasn't with Yard House. It is with Apex. They have given me the uh, free reign to uh, be a, uh, a, a person that does this for them and to speak on behalf of the company and to be a brand ambassador, so to speak. And uh, I mean, I, I could talk about Apex uh, all day, every day, and the great things that it, it, and advantages it's given me. But literally, it, it's, I, I, was a, uh, I, I was a fat guy that was given a golden opportunity, and I wasn't going to let it go to waste. And there's nothing wrong with, with fat guys, but I was not happy with myself. And this has given me like next level confidence and, and that next level of life that I never thought I had. Man, uh, yeah, that is absolutely incredible stuff there. And we're definitely gonna have some photos so we can really see that. But I mean, would you say it's benefited basically every aspect of your life? Every single aspect of my life. And if, every and commercial, that I, every single commercial that I did from putting my wedding ring on because I couldn't wear it for about two and a half years because it, I was too embarrassed to get it resized because it would ruin the inscription on the inside. So it just sat there on my bureau. The fact that I was able to play in the Frothingham Park uh, seven and eight year old father son football game. The fact that I am able to fly on a plane as much as I do for work and not take a deep breath lock my seatbelt in and pray that I don't have to move for the two hour flight. Every single aspect of my life is better. You know, as someone who has previously been uh, the owner of a fitness studio and I'm a big lifelong exerciser and health person, I'm a big believer in that you have to take care of yourself first so that everyone else you are taking care of and everything else you're taking care of in your life is going to get the best version of you. He's going to get 100% of you, 110% of you, instead of a version of you that isn't feeling their best and doesn't have energy. And so many of us in society think, I don't have the time to take care of myself. But if you take care of yourself, you're going to do a better job taking care of your family, your work, every other. Personal, this is so corny, but personal health does increase wealth. And wealth does not mean money. It means, it means exactly what you need to increase in your life to me. And my, my relationship with my kids, with my family, with my employees, with my job, with my life, uh, with my own self, everything is tenfold improved. That's, that's amazing. So let's circle it back. And we don't want to take up too much of your time or let this video run too long. But let's circle back to the run you've got going on before the beer fest. Because uh, now that you're going to run that, you've lost all this weight, you're going to actually participate in the run. And, you know, I'm, although so, I love to talk about health, we can still have a beer. I'm a runner. So many of these races I run so I can get a beer at the end. So it's yes, great to well, combine those two. Now, things. now it's just a lighter beer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But uh, so, yeah, so Apex Entertainment will have its second annual uh, Apex Entertainment Fun Run. It is uh, 9 a.m. on Saturday, September 17th. It is uh, nine hours before our beer summit. So you run in the morning get changed up, come on back and uh, you can party with the, with us at the beer summit. But uh, we, the run sponsors uh, New England's Center for Children and the Hole in the Wall Gang, which are two, again, uh, near and dear charities and organizations to my heart. I, I think I, I'm going to sidebar for you a second uh, and then I'll go back to the run if that's okay. I think one of the things that nobody really knows except internally is how philanthropic Apex as a brand is. We're at about right now, just to put a dollar amount on it, between working with New England Center for Children, working with uh, the Hole in the Wall Gang, with uh, Crossroads School for Autism here in Marlboro and other autism awareness groups in, in our other locations, uh, the, um, uh, the Boston Children's Hospital, we're, we're upwards of like $700,000 in, in, in funds that we've given out in five years. Wow. 
Tremendous. So we, we are 100% everything that we do, uh, we try to give back in some way every single time. It's a non-negotiable. There's no, there, you know, there's no angles. There's no like a uh, feather in our caps. It's very much like, hey, we can do this, but who else can it benefit besides, you know, uh, the bottom line? And if we can, you know, increase that awareness and if we can help just one person feel more comfortable, if we can help one person feel uh, more themselves or benefit, you know, the, someone getting that help, then we're all about that. Wow, amazing. So, Thank you to Apex. You know, That's a tremendous amount of money that can do a tremendous amount of good for yeah. people who are really in need. So that is incredible. But, uh, stuff. Yeah, our 5K is, is a little uh, jog around the neighborhood here in Marlboro. Uh, it starts and ends at um, uh, Apex Entertainment Center. Uh, when you end, uh, the top three runners, male and female, get a trophy. And then we literally close the building for the runners. So the runners, their friends and family. So if you run, Andy, your wife and kids could be cheering you on. And then after you cross the finish line, they get to go downstairs and play free video games and ride the bumper cars. And it's, we literally, it's included, Apex itself is included in the price of the admission for the run. So the runners and their families reap the benefits for uh, literally until like three, four o'clock in the afternoon before we have to close it down and start getting ready for the beer summit that night. It's all for the runners. You know, you're making, we'll there. You're, you're giving us that time and that, you know, and that effort uh, to put in. So we want to give it back to you. Fantastic. And we're definitely going to be there. So my wife and kids will absolutely 100% be there sharing us. Yeah. Off. And I'll then, send you that link as well. Yeah. We're going to include the links to the run, to the charities here below in this YouTube video. So everyone who's watching this can find out more information about these important charities and all the great charity work that uh, Apex does. Awesome. Well, Thank you for your time, George. How was your experience being on the show? Was it painful? I think this was, I think this, yeah, super painful, man. No, this was, this was awesome. I have followed you. Uh, you know, I see you at the Easton Fitness Center. I, I know exactly what you're doing and I'm super proud of, uh, you know, everybody from OA Class 99 and, and all their accomplishments. But I love that you have found this niche thing and you're just crushing it. And uh, I, I think it's awesome. I think that, you know, it's you you know, you say that, you know, I, I, you've watched me and you've kind of seen the last year of my development. I have watched all your videos and you are like, you're killing it. So uh, thank you for letting me be a part of this. And uh, I'm honored on, on this side. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we can do a couple more of these and we can talk about more events and we can talk about more parts of the industry that uh, you have questions on. Thank you, George. Thank you for the compliment. Thank you for the kind words. You're absolutely too kind. It's, uh, it's, just like you told us earlier, you know, making an impression on everyone has really worked for me and being memorable enough to, to get, you know, wonderful guests like yourself to be on my show really helps. So we thank you. I thank you for those kind words. And we would love to have you back. There's so many awesome. more topics my pleasure. that we could talk about. I could go on all day with you really, but we're not really yeah. a Joe Rogan podcast length. Yeah. Yeah. Show us a little bit of the background amazing there we are this is our ropes course right there and there's the video games down there and there's laser tag and bumper cars in the background and you know i'm sure that the next time we do this we can go maybe on, even on a virtual tour of the whole building so uh you know we can set something up like that let's definitely do that i'm sure everyone would love to see it the way i saw it love to bring i would i would love to show that apex up again. that would be fantastic well, all right, that's it. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. Please check out George. Check out Apex Entertainment. Check out the Beer Summit. Check out the second annual run. It's been a pleasure. Thanks again, everybody. Until next time, have a great day.